Chapter 4 of The Patchwork Girl of Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Patchwork Girl of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 4 The Glass Cat. The cat was made of glass, so clear and transparent that you could see through it as easily as through a window. In the top of its head, however, was a mass of delicate pink balls which looked like jewels, and it had a heart made of a blood-red ruby. The eyes were two large emeralds, but aside from these colors all the rest of the animal was clear glass, and it had a spun-glass tail that was really beautiful. "'Well, Doc Pipped, do you mean to introduce us or not?' demanded the cat, in a tone of annoyance. "'Seems to me you're forgetting your manners.' "'Excuse me,' returned the magician. "'This is Unc Nunky, the descendant of the former kings of the Munchkins, before this country became a part of the land of Oz.' "'He needs a haircut,' observed the cat, washing its face. "'True,' replied Unc, with a low chuckle of amusement. "'But he has lived alone in the heart of the forest for many years,' the magician explained. "'And although that is a barbarous country, there are no barbers there.' "'Who is the dwarf?' asked the cat. "'That is not a dwarf, but a boy,' answered the magician. "'You've never seen a boy before. He is now small because he is young. With more years he will grow big and become as tall as Unc Nunky.' "'Oh, is that magic?' the glass animal inquired. "'Yes, but it is nature's magic, which is more wonderful than any art known to man. For instance, my magic made you, and made you live.' and it was a poor job, because you are a useless and a bother to me. But I can't make you grow. You will always be the same size, and the same saucy, inconsiderate glass cat with pink brains and a hard ruby heart. No one can regret more than I the fact that you made me, asserted the cat, crouching upon the floor and slowly swaying its spun-glass tail from side to side. Your world is a very uninteresting place. I've wandered through your gardens and in the forest until I'm tired of it all, and when I come into the house the conversation of your fat wife and of yourself bores me dreadfully. That is because I gave you different brains from those we ourselves possess, and much too good for a cat, returned Dr. Pipt. Can't you take them out, then, and replace them with pebbles, so that I won't feel above my station in life? asked the cat pleadingly. "'Perhaps so. I'll try it, after I've brought the patchwork girl to life,' he said. The cat walked up to the bench on which the patchwork girl reclined and looked at her attentively. "'Are you going to make that dreadful thing live?' she asked. The magician nodded. "'It is intended to be my wife's servant-maid,' he said. "'When she is alive she will do all our work and mind the house. "'But you are not to order her around, Bungle, as you do us. "'You must treat the patchwork girl respectfully.' "'I won't. "'I couldn't respect such a bundle of scraps under any circumstances.' "'If you don't, there will be more scraps than you will like,' cried Margolot angrily. "'Why didn't you make her pretty to look at?' asked the cat. "'You made me pretty, very pretty indeed, and I love to watch my pink brains roll around when they're working, and to see my precious red heart beat.' She went to a long mirror as she said this and stood before it, looking at herself with an air of much pride. "'But that poor patched thing will hate herself when she's once alive,' continued the cat. "'If I were you, I'd use her for a mop, and make another servant that is prettier.' "'You have a perverted taste.' snapped Margolot, much annoyed at its frank criticism. "'I think the patchwork girl is beautiful, considering what she's made of. Even the rainbow hasn't as many colors, and you must admit that the rainbow is a pretty thing.' The glass cat yawned and stretched herself upon the floor. "'Have your own way,' she said. "'I'm sorry for the patchwork girl, that's all.' Ojo and Unc Nunky slept that night in the magician's house, and the boy was glad to stay, because he was anxious to see the patchwork girl brought to life. The glass cat was also a wonderful creature to little Ojo, who had never seen or known anything of magic before, although he had lived in the fairyland of Oz ever since he was born. Back there in the woods nothing unusual ever happened. 
Unc Nunky, who might have been King the Munchkins had not his people united with all the other countries of Oz in acknowledging Ozma as their sole ruler, had retired into this forgotten forest nook with his baby nephew, and they had lived all alone there. Only that the neglected garden had failed to grow food for them, they would always have lived in the solitary blue forest, but now they had started out to mingle with other people, and the first place they came to proved so interesting that Ojo could scarcely sleep a wink at night. Margalot was an excellent cook, and gave them a fine breakfast. While they were all engaged in eating, the good woman said, "'This is the last meal I shall have to cook for some time, for right after breakfast Dr. Pipt has promised to bring my new servant to life. I shall let her wash the breakfast dishes and sweep and dust the house. What a relief it will be!' "'It will indeed relieve you of much drudgery,' said the magician. "'By the way, Margalot, I thought I saw you getting some brains from the cupboard while I was busy with my kettles. What qualities have you given your new servant?' "'Only those that a humble servant requires,' she answered. "'I do not wish her to feel above her station as the glass cat does. That would make her discontented and unhappy, for of course she must always be a servant.' Ojo was somewhat disturbed as he listened to this and the boy began to fear that he had done wrong in adding all those different qualities of brains to the lot Margalot had prepared for the servant. But it was too late now for regret, since all the brains were securely sewn up inside the patchwork girl's head. He might have confessed what he had done, and thus allowed Margalot and her husband to change the brains, but he was afraid of incurring their anger. He believed that Unc had seen him add to the brains, and Unc had not said a word against it, but then Unc never did say anything unless it was absolutely necessary. As soon as breakfast was over, they all went into the magician's big workshop, where the glass cat was lying before the mirror, and the patchwork girl lay limp and lifeless upon the bench. "'Now, then,' said Dr. Pipt in a brisk tone, "'we shall perform one of the greatest feats of magic possible to man, even in this marvellous land of Oz. In no other country could it be done at all.' I think we ought to have a little music while the patchwork girl comes to life. It is pleasant to reflect that the first sounds her golden ears will hear will be delicious music. As he spoke, he went to a phonograph, which screwed fast to a small table, and wound up the spring of the instrument and adjusted the big gold horn. The music my servant will usually hear, remarked Margalot, will be my orders to do her work but I see no harm in allowing her to listen to this unseen band while she wakens to her first realization of life. My orders will beat the band afterward. The phonograph was now playing a stirring march tune, and the magician unlocked his cabinet and took out the gold bottle containing the powder of life. They all bent over the bench on which the patchwork girl reclined. Unc Nunky and Margalot stood behind near the windows, Ojo at one side, and the magician in front, where he would have freedom to sprinkle the powder. The glass cat came near, too, curious to watch the important scene. "'All ready?' asked Dr. Pipt. "'All is ready,' answered his wife. So the magician leaned over, and shook from the bottle some grains of the wonderful powder, and they fell directly on the patchwork girl's head and arms. End of chapter 4